Hi, welcome to the Linux channel. So many times I have discussed about uh, embedded Linux and as well as uh, Linux distributions and uh, you know even uh, open WRT. So as a part of discussion, a couple of times I showed my uh, Dragino V2 device. Uh, uh, this is a MIPS uh, processor based device. So this uh, has uh, open WRT in that. I have an identical uh, device over here and it is up and booted up and I thought uh, this time I can show a quick uh, demo of the same so you can see here open wrt you can see here this is the main uh, uh, project website and you will have tons and tons of documentation and anytime you buy you know any uh, wireless router or something like that in amazon you know most probably if it is uh, some consumer grade home wi-fi devices uh, it may use, uh, you know, it may have open WRT in that. So it, it is quite common. Okay, you can go to some documentation here and there. Even the, you know, this is again time to time I have discussed. Uh, somewhere you can search in the search, and when you provide Netgear or something, you can find various uh, hardware specs, and uh, you will find that you know any of these models will be using uh, so and so. Uh, is the model of that router and uh, some of the configuration stuff and uh, the open wrt image and stuff uh, sometimes you can uh, also download this and you can uh, yeah you can see here they also provide this images and stuff so sometimes you can even uh, download that firmware and uh, if you have the entire build setup you can build a custom uh, uh, os and you can tweak the kernel you can tweak the user apps you can also cross compile any user apps uh, and stuff and then you can load it back into this you know device uh, sometimes it depends uh, how they lock uh, that you know manufacturer sometimes they may allow they may not allow and the things like that so that is what so uh, as a you know demo i thought uh, let me just you know have this stuff i was working something on open wrt for a client uh, so it's uh of course, not this device, but you know, something on OpenWRT. So, it's an interesting uh, OS. It's a very lightweight uh, operating system. Uh, you can see here, I can just do an SSH. So, SSH root at 168.0.78.77. Yeah, 77. Because I kept the pi as 78 and I was confused between the password. Yep, so as you can see, we are inside. Uh, so this is the open WRT. So it's very, very lightweight Linux, and I can even do unim uh, minus r. You can see there unim minus a, it shows more stuff and it shows that MIPS processor. Uh, you can type uh, things like cat uh, CPU info and stuff. Of course, you can't do this ls CPU command, it's not supported here. So you can do cat uh, proc, uh, you know, CPU info, uh, stuff like that. <laughs> okay, and uh, if you put, uh, if you give free minus h, you can see it has a very limited memory. Uh, I think uh, the h option is not supported. Again, uh, since it's an embedded Linux, uh, what they do is they will have each application highly stripped down version. It is not going to be like your, you know, Ubuntu or Fedora stuff, which is fully bloated up application. So. It will be quite limited, <laughs> you can see here. Uh, you need to just uh, work with whatever is available. So you can see here, it has very less amount of memory. I, I'm not sure is there any other option. Usually we do free minus H. H stands for human readable so that it shows that um, available memory and stuff in uh, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes and stuff. Whereas uh, it, here it shows that raw values. Okay, so this is what. So uh, that's what this board is, uh, you know, booted up. You can hope, maybe you can see that status LEDs and stuff. So it's an interesting uh, board. You can build uh, some, uh, you know, interesting uh, products out of it. Of course, you can't do any cumbersome uh, VPN and stuff because uh, it doesn't have that horsepower. Uh, you know, it has. Uh, you can see here, it is meant for networking applications. First of all. It has this uh, WAN port and LAN port. So other than that, it has a provision for an antenna. I'm not sure whether the board has any inbuilt uh, wireless radio and stuff. I I'm not sure because I don't think so. This model has. And, uh, you know, they provide like a hat or something where you can, uh, you know, plug extra, you know, capabilities and stuff. Maybe it is uh, possible through that stuff or also you can also support uh, 4G 
uh, radio and uh, you know stuff like that you can put some sim card and stuff but anyway this is a just a bare bone board it doesn't have that okay so that's what so you can see there uh, it gets the same and uh, when you want to change anything it is quite different than uh, debian or <laughs> ubuntu you know stuff uh, you can go to slash etc and you can go to config and uh, uh, you can see here cat network i currently set it uh, as uh, uh, LAN and WAN ports uh, both are in the same subnet because I should be able to connect and access this otherwise what I can do is this I can uh, WAN port I can keep in this subnet whereas this I can change it so that uh, uh, you know anyway this works as a router and if I set uh, my PC as a DHCP or something and it can get uh, you know the DHCP address from this um, uh, open WRT Dragino device so I can do something like that as well so but uh, I need to often change here frequently if I do anything I need to go to you know network settings and then I need to change frequently and it is quite cumbersome so I thought maybe just for developmental purposes both of them you know I put in the same subnet okay so I started this uh, lower octet uh, typically my PC and other uh, systems are in the you know 80 range so anything starts from 80 to 89 are these you know everyday devices versus uh, any smartphones and all i'm okay to use uh, the dhcp provided address uh, and if it is something like this uh, server so then i'm putting them in static ip range around 90 subnet so something like that whereas i thought uh, anything like this iot devices or you know these kind of stuff or else my client stuff uh, I have set it in this 70 subnet so that I can put this one and even this one I'm not sure about the status of the operating system I mean open WRT uh, I may anyway you know have uh, the you know build I need to do it sometime I lost the build when I uh, reinstall this hard drive or I mean I have got another hard drive when I use that hard drive for something and reinstall this uh, uh, Linux in this new hard disk of this PC I lost that entire uh, build anyway it is quite easy because it is a still a public platform I can get that open WRT and uh, stuff and uh, it's quite easy there are some steps okay so this is something I thought uh, to share because uh, many are uh, quite new to the industry and uh, they are uh, you know I, I do get uh, any emails and as well as comments uh, and uh, people who may work in um, uh, such stuff and uh, one of the most important things uh, uh, other than you work in microcontrollers and stuff and if you are a you know part guy working in hardware as well as software kind of low level uh, stuff uh, it is good to know open wrt and it is good to have some hands on because open wrt is not limited with small devices you can run this in any typical x86 system you can run it on a laptop as well so that's what so other than that uh, like i mentioned it has a quite a limited uh, you know commands you cannot expect everything and you cannot expect any man pages uh, you know i don't think so any man pages will work here because uh, it is going to bloat the entire uh, stuff okay it should have highly compact uh, file system and uh, also these uh, libraries which are optimized for such kind of an embedded device okay so it will be that and uh, moreover it has to focus about reliability and other aspects the kernel should be highly stable you need sometimes uh, when you you know uh, use any kernel for this uh, it should be carrier grade and other uh, you know stuff so that kernel is at least five to eight years old and it is quite mature well tested and been in the industry for ages you need something like this in devices like this okay so uh, if you are a student don't jump around and think that why what if i put to 5.1 kernel or something sometimes it may be even not possible with this type of you know low level spec device okay you need to do lot of porting and uh, you know it is something a professional does as a part of his you know porting job because he need to take away strip the kernel and he need to do lot of stuff uh, you know besides just uh, architectural porting he need to optimize the kernel for such a tiny device okay so it takes a lot of time and also they need to optimize this boot up time you know so many factors are involved okay so that's what so uh, these are the things have to be taken care i can even do something i can even do this uh, reboot and we can do uh, a test that how much time it boots up okay so of course i don't have any console or any you know of course it doesn't have any uh, vga port to check you know the live uh, 
you know uh, messages but still we can just do this uh, and uh, you can see uh, the led have just flashed all reds and i can open a new terminal and i can uh, ping this ip okay 192.168.0.77 it should come up fairly fast see you can see here it is kind of booting uh, i'm not sure how far the camera captures okay it is uh, kind of blinking and uh, uh, within just a few seconds it should be up okay yeah you can see it is up okay so having said it has this uh, you know pathetic uh, you know performance uh, i can uh, do one thing is i can do an ssh to that and we can do an ssh root at i'm sorry uh, ssh root at uh, you know that board yes i have done a true bench uh, benchmark long back and if you see the dump <laughs> it took around uh, 15915 seconds which is around uh, four and a half hours okay so if you do that same true bench in your uh, later uh, uh you know laptops i mean uh, latest laptops or pc it will take around 80 seconds to 90 seconds or else maybe 40 seconds if it is a newer uh, you know generation processors okay whereas mine although it's a high spec device i mean i high spec pc it took around 90 seconds it takes generally around 90 seconds because true bench uses only single core and it does that benchmarking on a single core uh, versus here you can just forget it okay in this kind of aspects uh, uh, cat proc uh, you know cpu info you can see it has just uh, one core i believe uh, it is not any multi-core stuff uh, they have not mentioned i guess i'm not sure uh, yeah they have not uh, actually anything explicitly mentioned as a contrast uh, if you see in a pc okay ls cpu uh, you get this kind of an output and you can see how many cores and all that and even if it is not that proc cpu info uh, you should be able to see the number of you know core count or core id yeah this is core id is five and stuff whereas here something it shows as core zero which means it's the main uh, it's you know the first core okay as we know indexing starts with zero so it's the core id is zero or something so it again depends on how they have fine-tuned that embedded uh, linux kernel okay so again uh, if you are a beginner you may imagine is that something a different um, operating system or something nothing it's just you know standard uh, linux and they have custom built for these type of applications and uh, it itself is like a distribution just like we have fedora ubuntu and all versus the difference is ubuntu and fedora are meant for desktop and server such kind of uh, you know applications uh, versus open wrt is a highly optimized version and also it has some real-time capabilities unlike this you know desktop variant uh, linux uh, the desktop linux is not necessary it has to work in real-time characteristics versus something like this uh, you know it depends uh, sometimes they may optimize to work in a much aggressive way things like that so that it is more responsive and this characteristics is needed when you need to use this as any networks uh, routers or file servers like nas and uh, stuff because whenever you get packets it has to act fast and it has to process them on the fly so you need the kernel tuned up you need to kernel not to do this uh, you know preemption in a you know server like way and it has to do that aggressive uh, context switching and stuff so that it is well suited for this and also they compile the kernel so that the image size is reduced so that it fits in that uh, small tiny package and uh, you know stuff like that so this is what it is <laughs> so it is a fun little device and of course it has even gpio pins um, but this is not like a raspberry pi so if i compare this with something like raspberry pi you cannot compare anywhere so i can show you its uh, benchmarks so i have also discussed this in the past but uh, you know in this uh, relevant video it is good to have a look okay you see here these are the benchmarks let me just increase the size of this page you see here the recent uh, processor whatever i got from the volunteer it is reported around 44 seconds so that is 44 and then followed by 6 
digits okay so by the way if you are also interested you can run this to true bench benchmark on your mix processor arm x86 whatever it is let it be laptop server desktop whatever it is and then uh, you can send back your uh, you know benchmark results and i can add you in the credits okay so you can see here there are so many guys who have you know contributed to the same and of course some i have picked and some i have picked through my you know client uh, devices um, wherever i work uh, other than that some i got uh, through volunteers okay so you can do that you can contribute the same and it will be helpful okay the code is relatively simple and uh, it is also something i have discussed in the past some videos about process and uh, threads and uh, stuff like that so the code is quite old and uh, you can read about uh, why true bench and all that stuff over here so if you come down okay you can see here this is the last processor which is the slowest is this uh, dragino and it is uh, uh, you know it is around 15915 uh, million microseconds or something so you can see that's the you know last one over there and here is the raspberry pi 2 and the same one is scaled up here which is again raspberry pi 2 model b and uh, this raspberry pi which is raspberry pi 3 model b plus is over here okay so you can see here it is just taking around 1278 so it is no wonder you can run an entire gui user interface and stuff in this device of course you can have even open wrt on this and you can use it for any mission critical you know applications like cg like applications like this but i'm not sure about the reliability of this hardware but this hardware is you know done for that sort of applications it is a kind of industrial hardware where one time you can turn on plug it on and you can forget about it okay so if you are any uh, systems uh, developer or if you want to become a systems developer explore open wrt and uh, you know there are i do get uh, emails and comments saying that from where to start and all this really. you need to either join somewhere and then learn of course and if you want to self learn learn one by one and moreover have something in hand and uh, do some practical stuff don't read and sit and waste your time with books okay the more you do practical stuff you will get that knowledge the more i work with uh, you know various exciting projects i do learn several things out of it it is uh, something i must have missed learning about it at that point of time when i was working in this project now i am learning something new and stuff like that so you know you need to have that hands on okay reading somewhere uh, something like that it never you know going to help you you need to have that self discipline and uh, definitely if you are uh, into you know kernel platform development if you are into embedded uh, uh, development especially the operating system related embedded stuff because you can work embedded stuff on a microcontroller and all that stuff so if you are working on a standard operating system like this one see this is an embedded board but uh, it is like any other soc i don't see any much difference between this and uh, raspberry pi the only difference i see is the pi is much faster and this is much slower and this is a mips architecture uh, processor okay versus uh, that is arm based okay so that's that's the only difference i see and i don't see these days much difference between a raspberry pi and the laptop itself because the laptop is bit faster or more faster much faster uh, versus uh, pi is uh, have to catch up they have to definitely release the new pi with better specs maybe some 4 gb ram or something they better need to move on from that 1 gb ram and if they provide something it is well and good to be used as any media player device or uh, any youtube uh, you know uh, device to play and watch youtube videos but at this point of time pi is not you know uh, yet equipped so we can use pi for iot projects and all that stuff but we cannot use as an alternative for a laptop or something yet okay so that's what uh, same way even this device although i call as embedded although we sometimes call as embedded devices and stuff as i said in some videos i don't like the word calling explicitly as embedded device or something there is nothing so you know unique or special about it even this is a computer even this is a computer even this is a computer it, it all matters is the size its potential and the specs okay so it has very low specs so it works quite slow 
and it has some limitations it has no display port and other stuff so of course you cannot use this uh, like some raspberry pi raspberry pi the unique uh, thing about pi is also that it has that uh, pluggable micro sd card and also audio port and other stuff this doesn't have anything okay this has just you know as you can see here this has a phone jack so it has some type of a modem or thing over here and other than that lan and wan um, 100 mbps ethernet ports i don't think so this is one gigabit <laughs> ethernet ports okay other than that it has this uh, 9 to 15 volts range you know dc input so this again is helpful uh, because uh, if it is used by any product vendor or somebody what happens is they need some power supply to work for this so the power supply which i got is 12 amp and uh, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> 1 amp and 12 volts. So it is going to be, you know, fine for this specs. Of course, I cannot put something like 5 volts because it starts from 9 to 15 volts. So that's the range. So it is again versatile if you have any uh, 12 volt DC battery or something. I mean, uh, you know, 12 AH uh, SLA batteries, you can even hook directly here. And uh, that's the main intent of this uh, device because this is meant for professional application, industrial applications uh, and uh, stuff like that so that uh, this can be given by ISPs and all to their, uh, you know, internet uh, subscribers. So something like that. Okay. So that's, that's the main intent of this. Okay. So hope you learned something. If you have anything to discuss about uh, OpenWRT and um, things about like this okay be in touch via mail and also if you are enthusiastic check out uh, you know true bench and uh, report your uh, you know statistics or uh, benchmarks as the way i have provided over there you can go to you know download page and you can read about it some i have pre-compiled and you can direct directly download those uh, binaries and you don't need to cross compile and all okay so whereas if you are curious you have this you know dot c file but uh, compile it uh, as the way i have mentioned because we will get a proper benchmark rather than you know getting some wrong results and although you submit generally i keep it as a hold in my server and sometimes i do cross check and stuff like that so i have my own process what to accept what not to accept and where to put that you know sort of a uh, you know uh, I need to, you know, so I have my own uh, process, uh, what to accept and, uh, you know, where to keep that, you know, uh, uh, result on hold and stuff like that. I do enter it into the database, the source and other stuff. But sometimes unconfirmed when I mark it uh, as unconfirmed, sometimes I do get a chance that uh, I may even get that uh, particular hardware and I may do the same uh, tests and uh, if there is any discrepancy, I select whichever it I feel uh, fine and then it goes to this uh, you know main page over here so it, it will of course uh, you know it's not about accuracy it's all about how many samples we have and how is that device is going to perform based on the RAM speed the RAM uh, you know clock speed and as well as the high, you know the processor uh, uh, performance and that motherboard whatever it has put and then the climate also matters if you do in a ac room it is going to give a different result if you are doing at home it is going to give a different result so all these things uh, matters when you think about performance so i don't see this as any accurate uh, benchmark sometimes uh, two values can go either way i'm still fine but this gives a rough estimate that where is that we are at the moment okay with respect to any given you know hardware so that's why uh, if you are you know interested you know Check it out and uh, do contribute to the same. Thanks a lot for joining me. Stay tuned. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.